Hello YouTube, this is Patrick and I am back with another edition of Heavy Therapy. This is another collection update. I have five pieces of physical media to show and let's begin. First up, from Transylvanian Recordings, it was on my top 40 albums of 2021. Got it on CD. This is Sivirus with the album Decrepit. Flesh Relics. And this, I was just listening to this one more time to really see if I could place who this reminds me of because we say these words all the time, death, doom. What do we mean by death, doom? A lot of extreme music is self-referential, so I'm trying to get some names. The death metal parts remind me of Corpsest and the Death Doom or the Doomier parts remind me of Worm, Mortiferum, and Sepulchros. Sepulchros is actually a Portuguese funeral doom band. Put all those bands together, you get Sivirus. So this is a five piece out of Los Angeles, California. This is their debut album. You get seven tracks, 45 minutes, and 26 seconds of music. And um, like I said, it has a really uh, perfect blend of death doom going on, but it is definitely a death doom album, meaning if you like death metal, but you don't like doom. So a lot of these parts are going to be too slow for you. It's very doomy. Uh, and this album sounds like this band has been around longer than they have. I don't know the history of the members of the band, per se. But it sounds like a band that had an idea, had a conception, that, and they really put it together in a way that is just deeply impressive for a freshman release, or a debut. So... Really rumbling, thick bass. That's that. That's that part makes me think of Corpsest. Uh, then there's a type of atmosphere, a type of melody that creeps that they that they build that reminds me of Worm. Some of the drumming reminds me of Mortiferum, though less um, less. Uh, and this could just be the mix, less sort of noticeable. Less. Um, Less of these parts will blow your mind as far as uh, compared to uh, Mortiferum, but that's who I think of. Sivirus, Decrepit Flesh Relic is my first album that I wanted to show you that I got in my collection. Next up is a band out of Mexico City, Mexico. They are a death metal band, and they are called In Obscurity Revealed. And this album is called Glorious Impurity. It's out on Blood Harvest in 2018. Picked up mine from Rotted Life. And here is a cool little inner sleeve that says Death Metal in Spanish. And there's the other side. No lyrics, which is always disappointing to me when I spend money on a vinyl. I want lyrics. So, nine tracks, 36 minutes, and 51 seconds of music. Genre, this is fast, fast death metal. Um, so fast that some of the fast tremolo picking even can remind me of black metal parts. Um, track four, Dismay, reminds me of Wigadude. Um, track six has this, these killer drums that also remind me of Mortiferum. But I would say... In Obscurity Revealed is for fans of Frenolith and of Feather and Bone. You like those two bands, you're going to like In Obscurity Revealed. And another band that In Obscurity Revealed reminds me of is Morbid Angel. This is Altars of Madness, came out on 1989 on Earache. 
Nine songs, 34 minutes and 59 seconds. Classic lineup here, David Vinton on vocals and bass. Trey Azagoth on lead guitar. Richard Brunel, rest in peace, on guitars. And Pete Sandoval on drums. I was texting one of my friends the other day, just like, how much ground all, Morbid Angel covers on Altar of Madness. Altars of Madness in 1980, from 1989. How much ground they already cover on this debut full length. Uh, they probably are the band that most... So if someone was asking what three bands, three old school death metal bands and most modern death metal bands borrow from worship and so forth, I would say Incantation, Immolation, and Morbid Angel. Just the riffs, the speed, the drumming on this is great. Um, this is a newer press. It sounds great to my ears. And every time I listen to this, I love it more and more. One of my favorite old school death metal albums. Classic era for sure. Glad to have it in my collection. Next up is a band that's hard to categorize. They really shaped my early to mid 20s when I first discovered them. And I am talking about Dillinger, the Dillinger Escape Plan with their final album from 2016 called Disassociation out on Party Smasher. 11 songs, 50 minutes, and seven seconds of music. This band is actually from Morris Plains, New Jersey. Pretty cool. Gatefold. I I never can tell what that is that's broken, that's disassociating. Um, but so this album's interesting because the band knew it was going to be their last album. Uh, I don't know if it was a, uh, if it was um an amicable breakup, an amicable breakup, but it wasn't a total collapse. A total hatred fest going on either. Greg Pucciato, Liam, Billy, Ben, and Kevin here put out a great farewell, Mona Lisa, to its fans. And so Dillinger Escape Plan probably doesn't need an introduction, but progressive metal, math core. I like them because they pull the jazz parts, so if, yeah, jazzy, avant-garde, I would say. Um, this album is everything the band does, except for shorter tracks. This is mostly longer tracks. I mean, every track on here is longer than a lot of their um, earlier material. That was a lot of short bursts of rapid, I don't know, progressive grind. It may be another term to use for this band. But, um, yeah, I will always love this band. I love what Greg Bucciato is doing now. I like to see them get back together as a five-piece. But, uh, yeah, happy to have Disassociation in my collection. And um, I only need a few more Dillingers to complete their catalog. And finally, an album that was also on my year-end list. I think I already had it and I showed it, but I didn't show it in a collection update. This is Ngua Ignata with Sinner Get Ready, another avant-garde artist. Um, uh, Ngua Ignata is the stage name of Kristen Hader. Um, she was born in California, but her biography is interesting. Her musical, her training in classical music is interesting. One of just the most emotionally heavy and beautiful voices that I've heard and um, a couple of other artists a couple of other musicians are on this record there is the um, including Seth Manchester beautiful Gate Falls here This was out on Sergeant House, and there's a lyric sheet. But I wanted to, like, instead of describing the music, or sort of 
um, in addition to describing the music, which I can't really do. Well, let me just tell you what instruments are on here. Which in what instruments are played by Kristen herself? Vocals, piano, uh, two types of banjos, a cello, an organ, something called a bowed psaltery, um, a mountain dulcimer, and a prepared piano. And I had to look up what a prepared piano is. And it is this, it is when you alter the sounds of the keys on, of a piano by placing erasers or utensils between the strings. That, um, I didn't know that existed. That sums up the approach on center, get ready. Uh, yeah, if you just like avant-garde, beautiful and dark music that isn't um, easily placed in a genre, if you like Chelsea Wolfe, um, yeah, give Lingua Ignota a shot and I think you will really like her music. Likes it also a strange word, but it's more than like it's a. I think you'll feel this music. I think it, you'll. Um, it makes your mind go to places. She has an interesting spin on religious icon, um, religious um, iconography. I forgot how to say that word right now. Of course, um, and. Yeah, again, I wouldn't even say that it's a anti-religious album. It's an exploration of the corruption of religion, the playing around with the the usually the masculine images of God. Center, get ready. Awesome listen. Makes you think. Her voice is absolutely beautiful and haunting. And um, yeah, this is my collection update. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Out of these bands, what, what are your favorites? What other albums from these artists do you like? Who else should I check out? Uh, thanks for, for um, watching, and uh, talk to you all soon.